All right, we're back. This is the last bit of work I'm doing for the night. And I'm adding some embellishments. I'm going to be adding some more of the jewelry that I already started adding right around here. You've already seen that. I was going to just use the um, serrated edge tool. But I want to go in a little deeper, so I'm using the fork and cross hatching to add on the piece. I'm hooking a few poles on the surf, a few poles, God, a few holes on the surface level. Cause I'm not trying to go so deep that I end up creating air pockets. Good amount of slip that I'm laying on here to make sure that this piece stays in place nicely. All that excess will get scraped away. And I'm, I've got to go slowly with this, otherwise I can actually accidentally rip it and pull it apart, and I don't want to do that. But creating some texture, giving the slip something to lock onto. Placing this now where it's going to be. I think right about there is good. And I'm pressing down gently but firmly. I'm just going to cut that piece off right there. That's going to be molded into a better shape than it is. And I'm so backwards. I took my bath already, and here I am, playing in the dirt again. But it's cool. I mean, there'll just be some topical dust that'll get on me or whatever, and that's fine. I'll rinse that off before I go to bed. I'm pulling down on the sides and just bringing the clay outward to secure the hold. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just pull down a little bit on the edges and bring it forward. And I'll reinforce it with the slip that I'm scraping off on the edge. I'll just go back in and reapply. Just to make sure that that seal is nice and tight. And I'm just pulling the slip back in and moving it up and along the sides over the top. I'm going to do the very same thing on this side. Take this extra slip that I just scraped off onto the table and move it along the side there. Sort of scrape it down and just bring it back in and up so that it's connected fully to the sides. And that allows all of that to dry in place and have a nice, nice tight seal. Little area in there, I'm just going to tighten in with some slip. All right, that's it for that little piece. And I'm going to use this piece of clay that I cut that piece out of to just pull off some pieces and make some more necklace treatments. I can go ahead and start adding some texture here where I'm going to be joining it with the fork. I want it to be fairly deep. And this jug right here is liquor. My girl at my job made some sort of concoction with milk and rum and pineapple and something and something. So she gave it to me a few days ago and because it has the milk in it, I asked her, was it cool to drink since it's been sitting in the fridge? Initially, I had put it in the freezer, and then I almost froze it, took it out, put it in the freezer, and I think she gave this to me on, like, Thursday. So, yeah, I didn't want, like, the milk curdling, but I just texted her. She said, I'm good to go, so this is my nightcap, and this may end up being considered drunk sculpting. We'll see how much I take down while I'm doing this. 
It's good. And it's strong. All right, so I'm creating a little ball that I think I'm going to slice in half. And of course, because the clay is soft, that sort of messed up the look of it, but it's not a problem. Again, the clay is soft, so you just press it right back into what you need it to be. I'm using the serrated edge tool because that piece is way too tiny to um, rock with the larger tool. Putting slip down in the area that I'm going to be putting this piece onto. That's going to go right there.
I hope I'm not breathing like I'm having an asthma attack. I'm not. I'm just a mouse breather. What can you do? My hands are dusty, so I'm just spritzing it with water so that I won't get those annoying little dry marks that occur. Taking and splitting this sphere I just created in two. This circle is going to be changed into a tube because there's just this small tight area that I have to fill in and I think this will be perfect for that. I'm running out of slip, y'all. I gotta make some for tomorrow. I'll do that as soon as I walk in the door when I get home. I'll just put a bunch of crumbles in there, put some water in it when I get home, and by the time I'm ready to return to this, it'll be ready and perfect. That didn't go in the way I needed it to. It's cool, though. I'll make it happen. I'll mold it into the shape that I want while joining it at the same time. With clay, you will always figure it out. No fear. No worries. Huh. You gotta love the way I'm saying that like I didn't have all of the fear and all of the worries and wasn't completely intimidated by this medium. I don't know, man. Sometimes getting out of your own way is the hardest thing in the world to do. We question ourselves more than anyone. And I mean, I know it comes with the turf. You're always hardest on yourself, especially as a creative. But we've got to learn how to lighten up on that because, you know, you'll be doing some amazing things. And it's like everyone sees it but you. And I think we're not trying hard enough. And we're so concerned with the humility factor and not getting beside ourselves because we feel like there's a certain amount of karma that comes with that. And we also feel that there's a certain amount of opportunities, rewards, and awards we'll miss out on if we dare to say, yeah, I deserve that shit. You ain't give me nothing like I worked for it. And we feel that that's bragging a little too much and we feel that there's gonna be a penalty to it. And you know what I've decided? There should not be a penalty for truth. And certain things are truth. There are certain things as a creative you know about yourself. You know when you have a certain set of skills that are not only admired by people, but they're envied. And that's a blessing. That is nothing to feel weird about. That is nothing to be ashamed of for heralding. It is perfectly okay to say, I'm the shit. And you know, as an old head, we have a tendency to get just really disrespectful when it comes to how we regard and how we speak of the younger generation. And um, you know, every generation has its flaws for sure. 
so do ours. And one of the things I admire about the boldness of that generation that I also saw in my generation, I mean, it was incredibly evident with the oncoming of hip hop that we got into bigging ourselves up and daring somebody to dispute us. You look at artists like LL Cool J from back in the day, more currently, a Kanye West, a Jay-Z, all of those brothers came up saying, I'm the best to ever do it. Now that's debatable, of course, because art is subjective. So some people are gonna feel like they were the best and some people are gonna feel like you ain't really do nothing special. But they had to think it, they had to believe it, they had to know their own talent and be unyielding in stating their worth in order to get where they are. And as creatives, we must do the same thing. Did you know that I'm a little too tipsy now to remember the name of the documentary, but it was like something like Black Art in America in the Absence of Light. I don't know if any of you saw that. Amazing documentary. And one of the things that stuck with me and disturbed me most about our place in the art industry, the art world, was that we are 1% of it. I am on about seven different art Facebook groups. And every single day, a new person, a new artist posts for the first time and takes my breath away with their talent. So out of seven groups with tens of thousands, in some case, hundreds of thousands of members, how on earth is it even mathematically, mathematically possible that the world over, black people the world over, and then if we want to get a little more inclusive, people of color the world over with these unimaginable talents are not getting the recognition or the chances that they should be getting. And we all know why that is. No one's going to play stupid, nor will anyone be allowed to be stupid in regards to these facts. So when you're talking about existing in a world that is constantly showing you that until they are ready to imitate you, until they are ready to appropriate, you are going to be treated as if you're invisible. However, we're always being watched, but we're not always being let in. And when these are the odds that you have to rally against and rail against, when it's about making a living off of art, or even if you're not making a living, even if you just want to know that your art is going to have the same shot that everybody should, you've got to let go of a certain level of humility. If humility is part of your spirit, it's always going to be there. I promise you, it's always going to be evident. But there is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I'm a bad motherfucker. Look at that shit I created. Oh my God, that is dope. That is dope. And the majority of people are going to agree with me that that's dope. It's okay to say that. It's okay to know that. It's okay to revel in your own magnificence. And as long as you are not trying to keep anybody out of the game, as long as you are not using that knowledge of your magnificence to try to say that someone else is not magnificent or does not have the right to be magnificent at the same time you're being magnificent, then you're good to go. There's room enough for the greatness in all of us. I'm going to take one more swig. That's why I'm talking a lot. I mean, I talk a lot anyway, but I don't usually get deep. It's just about, you know, the sculpting. Anyway, you will take from it what you will. How's that looking, y'all? I'm liking it a lot. All right, so it's time to go down to the third strand. And I'm going to create a longer tube to start off this one and connect it. So let me go ahead. And so right that area, cross, hatch. I have to say that slowly, otherwise I mess it up every time. Now I can go ahead and put this detail because if you saw the other videos, I've already hollowed out the inside. So we're getting close to the finish line at this point. At this point, I'm putting everything in place. Um, tomorrow, after I create a new bowl of slip, the bag is going to be taken off of this so it can start to air dry a little bit in this AC environment and probably around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, something like that, I'll be ready to go ahead and get started on adding more detail, finessing some areas. Um, I'm also probably going to see how the wise one is doing. He has been drying while loosely tinted and I really need to smooth him out and start getting him ready for the kiln. And I told you there's a new creative journey that I'm going to be taking and sharing with you guys. Actually, I'm going to be inviting you guys to come along with me, and I hope that you will answer the call. I didn't get any work done on that aspect like I planned to, but um, I think what I'm going to have to do, I started a journal for my sculpting. 
so that I can keep track of the type of clay that I use, the type of glazes I use. If there's any new technique, I want to write that down because if anybody knows me, y'all know it's no secret, I'm forgetful in ways that are concerning. So, you know, a week from now, I'll be like, I don't know what I did with this or what I did in this area. So I have to keep those journals for myself. So I think what I need to do is also keep a journal to plan out this new endeavor. So I'm going to write a very simple to-do list, not ambitious, just do this one thing when you get home. And when I'm successful in doing that one thing, it's going to feel really great because it's going to set the mood for continuing on and doing more of it each day when I get home. So I'm excited about that. Pulling down the clay and using the slip to just pull it forward and blend it to create a nice, a nice tight seam. Let me turn the camera a little bit. And doing the same thing on the inside. I'm stabbing her with my fingernails, oh my God. Same thing on the inside, pulling down some clay and pulling the excess slip out of the way and into areas that'll fortify this hold. It's coming along well. Same thing with this outside, going in a little bit and just pulling that out. So this, this uh, should be nice and tight, yeah. Squirting that a little bit so that, uh, dropped it. Putting a little squirt of water onto the clay because my hands are dry and all that means is that it's going to get all of those clay dust particles into the outside and then it creates a lot of unsightly cracks and fissures that I don't like to see. So I do that to make sure it doesn't happen. So I just cut that piece in half and I'm just reforming it back into a circle with my fingers. Scraping the residue off of the serrated edge and just going in, making texture. Same thing here, I'm gonna go in and make texture because I just dragged the slip up into that area. I accidentally just serrated this, so I'm just going to take a little bit of slip, put it on the outside, scrape this tool off. I'm just gonna smooth it to get rid of that hole that I created. And I'm applying a little bit of pressure to close it up. And that's repaired decently enough to make me happy. So here I go again. Adding slip to that area. And what is this? I don't know what happened here. I don't know what I did. So I'm just gonna pull that forward a little bit. I don't know what happened. I stabbed it while I wasn't looking. That's what I assume happened. So I'm just gonna work this bobble on top and press down. And I can't press too hard because of course it'll alter the shape and it won't be a circular, but I am trying to press firmly. So now I'm gonna come in here with this and pull down, in and down, in and down. Joining that clay, using the slip and uniting it with the existing clay. So I'm pulling in and down. And I've got to get in here, doing the same thing, and just trying to be gentle enough to maintain the shape, but create a very strong bond so that this does not pop off, so that there's not air in the center of it that's going to cause it to get in the kiln and explode. So it's going to be interesting to see, guys, what happens when this piece goes into the kiln, if it makes it, if all of this effort of doing these elaborate little pieces, if it's going to last, they say, don't fall in love with anything until it makes it out of the kiln. So I fell in love with something. It made it out of the kiln and still broke when I got it home. So I sort of say, for me, it's more akin to don't fall in love with anything until the clay has been vitrified with some type of glaze because that is what really strengthens it. I always thought it was the heat of the kiln that strengthened your piece. Like I said, until I had a piece out of the kiln that broke just because it was gently set down onto the floor inside of a box. It was just a tap and that bad boy broke. So now I'm just like, now that I've had my experience with glaze and I see how strong it is after the glaze is on, after it's vitrified, which in case you don't know, and I'm not trying to be funny either because I damn sure didn't know what the word vitrification means. I ain't paying any attention 
in um, science class in high school, and I never made it to chemistry, so there's that. So anyway, vitrification is the process that happens when the glazed material joins, because of heat being a catalyst, to the clay. It interlocks and combines with the clay particles and creates a a sort of a, I can't even say a surface because it's it's not topical. That's what I thought glaze was. I thought it was like having your nails done and then you put on a clear coat. You know, that clear coat is topical. It's not seeping down. It's sitting on top of this. I ended up realizing once I did my first glazing, because you have to do three coats and the um, studio teacher told me that the glaze, the clay is really going to absorb the glaze. So that's why you always have to put those three coats if you really want it to show like you're intending. And I didn't understand that that glaze is seeping into the clay. Now, it's not seeping into the deepest recesses, but it's not just on the outer layer, on the epidermis at all. It's, uh, let me see, think of it as like tattooing. Tattooing doesn't just hit that top layer of skin. It's going in a little deeper. So that depth that is achieved is joining to the clay and making it ceramic. That's when it's no longer bisquare. It is now ceramic because it has united with another material, and that's what makes it so hard. Now... Ceramic still cracks, ceramic, not cracks, ceramic is still fragile. Ceramic can still break, but ceramic breaks as a result of some serious mishandling or, you know, dropping it from a distance. Ceramic is not going to break because you did that or that or that or that. Ceramic is not going to break. Now, you might say, well, Terry, that didn't break. Yeah, that's because it's moist and it's in um, a particular state where it seems like it's harder than it is. Once all of this clay dries completely out, I can probably pluck that and it would fall off. Once it's ceramic, I can pluck that and nothing's going to happen. If I drop it off this table, something's going to happen. And that's fine because anybody getting um, a fine art sculpture, they automatically know, usually based on the money they've paid for it, to handle this with care. But even when you're getting, you know, the mass produced sculptures out of like Ross or out of Dollar Tree or wherever, you know not to throw it down. You know not to throw your little figurine down. It's ceramic. You know that it's fragile. So. You'll take that care for something that you paid 5 to $50 for, so you know the care that's going to be taken when somebody has shelled out 5000 or 50000 And what I want as an artist, as a sculptor, as a creator, is to make sure that when somebody acquires my pieces and I ship them off, that I have done everything possible to make it a very sound structure that, with the right handling and care, will last them for a lifetime. And for me, glazing seems to be the key. Now for you sculptors that don't glaze, yo, tell me your secrets. Are they secrets? Do you mind sharing? I would love to know how you feel confident in the integrity of your sculpture without glazing. And I am so serious about that. If you wanna holler back at me, please do. If you're willing to share techniques, please do. Because right now I'm only seeing one way. And this is life, there's never just one way. There's only the way that you know and what, what you're going to eventually be introduced to. So introduce me. All right, I'm going to stop right now because I want to take a little break. I do not intend on going to bed late tonight. I have to work tomorrow, and I definitely want to get enough rest. I'm trying to get better at that, but I started with this and wanted to at least get one of the strands done while you were watching. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the clay away now. I've started a new bag to repurpose, and this video actually clocked out at 47 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and return the topper to the slip bowl. Clean off one of these instruments because it's mad junky. Put these little pieces up. I don't think I need to spray her. I think I want her to stay in exactly the state she's in. So I'm just going to go ahead and tent her with a plastic bag. Press some of the air out of it. Turn that bag over on itself. Tuck it. Here's my bottle of liquor. I'm going to go out on the patio, have a few more swigs. And then I'll be done. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for hanging with me through this journey. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really need the support. I've been stuck at 80 subscribers now for over a week and a half. And I have too many people that I know on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram for that to be mathematically possible. Now, algorithmically possible, it definitely is because you just not may not be hearing my pleas or seeing my videos. But if you're seeing this, go to YouTube subscribe. My actual channel is Art by Terry, T-E-R-R-I 5464. Again, that's Art, A-R-T by 
B Y Terry T E R R I five four six four. Now, if you don't remember the five four six four, no problem. Put in Art by Terry. Art by Terry T E R R I, and I promise you, you'll you'll know my page when you see it. Hit that subscribe button. Be everything that you've been to me in the past, which is crazy supportive, and help me run my numbers up because numbers running up means more visibility. It means that more people have a chance to watch these quote unquote, even though I don't really know what I'm doing, tutorials, and a lot of young black sculptors and especially young female black sculptors, sculptors that are my age who are black, who just can't find a channel with somebody who looks and speaks like them and maybe is creating things that are ancestrally familiar, you can get that now. I'm giving you that because I decided to be the change that I want to see. Love you. Peace.